Now we go to one more theorem. This theorem is little longer. But you see the steps. Once you understand the steps, it is very simple. Let us see which theorem we are learning. Now this theorem is based on the next exercise which we will be solving. Practice set 3.3. Now what does the statement say? In a right angled triangle, the length of the median of the hypotenuse is half the length of the hypotenuse. Now first of all what do we have? There is a right angle triangle. What is the right angle triangle here? Triangle ABC. Where is it right angled? Right angled at B. Okay. What we said then? The length of the median of the hypotenuse. Median means what? It is a line which is drawn from the opposite vertex and is cutting the hypotenuse into two equal parts. So the median of the hypotenuse here is BD which is dividing AC into two equal parts. So the length of the median of the hypotenuse that is BD is half the length of the hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is AC. Okay, we have to show that this median is cutting this hypotenuse into two equal parts. Therefore, this length is equal to half of AC or this one length of BD is equal to length of AD is also equal to length of TC. But what we have to actually prove here, the length of the median of the hypotenuse is half the length of the hypotenuse. Means what? We have to prove BD is half of AC. Let us see what is given. Now see what is given. In triangle ABC, angle B is 90 degrees. Therefore, it is a right angle triangle. Segment BD is the median. Fine. What are we to prove? As I told you, BD is half of AC. What is the construction? Let us see. You will see the construction represented with dotted lines. This is, these two are dotted lines, DE and EC. So, what are they saying? Take a point E on the ray BD. So, a point E is taken on the ray BD such that D lies between B and E and length of BD is equal to length of DE. So what we are doing? We are producing or extending this BD to a point E such that BD is equal to DE. After we reach this point, what should we do? We should join EC. Okay. Now, so these two parts are the construction and that is done with dotted line. So, draw segment EC. Now, what are we doing? First, we are taking two triangles BDA and a triangle EDC. Okay. Now, see the triangles which are considered BDA and EDC. BD is represented with one line, DA with two lines, so triangle BDA, EDC, ED represented with one line and DC two lines. Okay, so in triangle BDA and triangle EDC. Now, when we say that means we are trying to prove that these two triangles are congruent. First let us see how we can prove that these two triangles are congruent. We have one pair of sides which are congruent. We have one more pair of sides which are congruent. We have these angles which are opposite to each other that is angle ADB and angle EDC. They are opposite to each other. They are congruent. Why? Because of vertically opposite angles. Then we can say triangle BDA is congruent to triangle EDC. Okay. So here segment BD congruent to segment DE. See here 
segment BD congruent to segment D. But how did we get segment DE? That is from construction. So that is why I have written here construction. Which is the other pair of sides? Here segment AD is congruent to segment DC. Okay, so I write here segment AD is congruent to segment DC. We know that segment AD congruent to segment DC was given. Why? Because BD was the median. Median divides the side into two equal parts. So here we can write given. Then we have the pair of angles which are equal. Let us see which pair of angles are equal. That is angle BDA and angle EDC. So I write here angle BDA is congruent to angle EDC. What was the reason we said? Vertically vertically opposite angles. Now once we have once we have these two sides and the angle in between. Again these two sides and the angle in between. So which test is it? SAS test. Therefore triangle BDA is congruent to triangle EDC. Therefore triangle BDA Congruent to triangle EDC by the SAS test. By the SAS test. Okay. If we have got this, from this we can say that a pair of segments and a pair of angles are congruent. Let us see which pair of segments we will take. Look at the figure here. We will take segment AB and segment EC. It was these two triangles. Right. So we can say that segment AB is congruent to segment EC. So I write here segment AB congruent to segment EC. That is by what? These are sides. So by CS. C, T. That is corresponding sides of congruent triangles. Also we have a pair of angles which are congruent. Now those angles when we take, we can take angle D, A, B and angle D, C, E. Okay. Instead of taking angle D, A, B, I can also say angle C, A, B. It is the same. So, I will write angle C, A, B. Angle C, A, B is congruent to angle. Let us look at the figure and then write. Angle C, A, B is congruent to angle a, C, E. You can see a C, A was marked with two lines, right? Here two lines and then here one line. So angle C, A, B is congruent to angle A, C, E. So I write here congruent to angle A, C, E. Now how is this? If this was C, A, C, T, this will be C A C T. Now, if I am saying that this angle here is congruent to this angle here, this angle is congruent to this angle, that means these are two angles on either side of the transversal. And either side of the transversal are alternate angles. And alternate angles are equal means line AB is parallel to line EC. 
okay so therefore i can write that line ab parallel to line ec how by the alternate alternate angles angles test now if line ab parallel to line ec and line bc is the transversal okay let us see line ab parallel to line ec and line bc is the transversal what happens then then you can you see here angle abc and angle ecb are interior angles they are on the same side of the transversal and we know angle abc plus angle ecb is equal to 180 degree because angle abc and angle ecb are supplementary okay so what will happen angle abc will have some relation with angle e c okay here we'll see angle ecp here i am writing angle abc and angle ecb what happens here it is 90 degrees but this angle plus this angle is 180 so if one is 90 the other angle also will be 90 degree therefore they are congruent to each other angle abc congruent to angle ecb why because angle abc and angle ecb are interior angles on the same side of the transversal and they are supplementary now what we will do we will consider this triangle triangle abc and a triangle ecb just now what did we say angle abc is congruent to angle ecb also we said segment ab congruent to segment ec by cs ct so that is the same thing we will write now so see here now in triangle abc and triangle ecb okay angle abc congruent to angle ecb segment ab congruent to segment ec also we have segment bc congruent to let us see what see see here segment bc is common to both these triangle so segment bc is present in triangle abc and segment bc is present in triangle ebc so segment bc congruent to segment bc common side so segment bc congruent to segment bc by common common side therefore triangle which triangles we have taken triangle abc and triangle ecb triangle abc congruent to triangle ecb so this was two sides and one angle so by the sas test therefore triangle abc is congruent to triangle ecb now let us see which sides will be congruent then you can see here therefore side be will be congruent to side here ac therefore segment be is congruent to segment ac okay so segment be is congruent to segment ac once we prove that the two triangles are congruent how are the pairs of sides congruent to each other by cs ct 
T that is corresponding sides of congruent triangles. So if segment BE congruent to segment AC, BE is equal to AC. And if BE equal to AC, if I multiply half on both the sides, what happens? It becomes half BE is equal to half AC. Now let us see what is half BE. This is, this is BE. Half of BE will be just BD. So in place of half BE, I can write just BD. Therefore, BD is equal to half AC. So I have got BD equal to half AC. So let me see what I have to prove. To prove BD equal to half AC. So it is proved.